when there is a civil emergency, people flock to the supermarkets to hoard toilet paper and spam. It's one of those things. During the holidays, there was once fights over the uh, Black Friday spam special. People go crazy over spam. Aloha everyone, Sheldon Simeon here back with another Hawaii lesson for you. This time talking about musubi and very in particular, the most popular, the one that everyone recognizes, spam musubi. Is it Hawaii? Is it Japanese? So musubi is a rice ball fashioned after the onigiri, which is Japanese. Usually it will be filled with something like a pickled plum or just salted and covered with seaweed. How did we start off with this rice ball, the onigiri, and then end up with this meat burrito sushi concoction we call Spam Musubi? Basically, it's a pork cake. <laughs> this pressed, cured piece of meat that everyone liked it. So it's salty. When you fry it up, it becomes crisp on the outside and tender in the middle. Uh, as the years gone by, you start to see now chefs taking creative freedom on it and making spam like this guy, Chef Rob Ramsher with his musubar artisan. What is this? I don't want to say spam, but basically he's making spam. <laughs> but using heritage pigs from Maui and then creating his take on this luncheon meat. The musubi is a blank canvas that you can put all types of different proteins on top of it. You know, I've seen people put pieces of hot dogs on top of it. Here's another one, Portuguese sausage. Sausage that you'll see in so many breakfasts in Hawaii. You can even get to go to McDonald's and get a Portuguese sausage platter. So we're gonna make a rice topping called furukake. It's that everything spice of Hawaii. It's a spice that is usually meant to top off on rice from Japan. So we're gonna make our own version using nori, some bonito flakes, sesame seeds, some salt and some sugar. We blurred the lines, you know. I was a mother that was born in the Philippines, you know, my dad that spoke Ilocano. But here I am thinking that furukake was part of our culture. And I think that's unique, very unique to Hawaii that uh, those lines are blurred that you, these different cultures become yours just because it's so integrated into everything in Hawaii. Furukake is through and through Japanese. You'll see it on top of everything. It, it was used to flavor onigiri. You see it on the top of bento boxes, uh, flavoring rice and fish. There was always bottles of furukake in my household. When I came to New York, I thought the Everything Bagel had furukake on it. And I said, can I get the bagel with the furukake? Don't be that guy. Don't steal my idea for the cocky bagels. We're gonna take all of these ingredients and then toast them up. We're gonna toast that until everything comes together. Japanese food has a huge, probably the most influence uh, on Hawaii cuisine. You see it, uh, the addition of soy sauce, the addition of shoyu in Hawaii cuisine has the most biggest influence. Teriyaki, that's why you see Hawaiian barbecue, you think that it's uh, it's Hawaiian, but it's that, that shoyu sauce in there. It's toasty. That's gonna be used for toppings on our musubi. What's the first thing that you learned to cook growing up in Hawaii? You better learn how to cook rice. It's actually a term. If you're being bad in school or wherever you say, the teacher might tell you, go home cook rice. I'm gonna do equal parts for this sushi rice. So for every cup of rice, I'm gonna put one cup of water. So we're using sushi rice because we want the rice to be sticking together. We want the rice to be actually become this mold as you put it into the press. See, musubi isn't technically a sushi. It doesn't have vinegar in it. In order to be called a sushi, you must add vinegar to the rice. We don't want that for the musubi. We just want it to be cooked and sticky. So I'm gonna rinse it, get it clean, washed out a few times until the water starts to get clear on us. 
three cups of water. Make sure it's level. Wipe the bottom. Make sure it's dry. Put a lid on it. And remember, make sure you press the button. You hear that moment playing basketball outside. Oh my God. I can hear my, hear my mom yelling. Did I ever push the button? <laughs> Scarred 30 years later. <laughs> All right, so our rice has just clicked off and it's nice and warm. I'm just gonna take this and fluff it. We're now gonna put oil in the pan because the amount of fat that is in the spam is more than enough. Let's take some of our Portuguese sausage. Spam has gone through these different moments and then and shine in Hawaii, so to say. When it first came out, spam was everywhere, right? These GIs coming back from World War II was requesting to eat spam. There was also a lot of military rations. That's why you see canned goods so prolific in that time of the history in Hawaii. As spam was everywhere, everyone started to include it into their cuisine. Filipinos, Japanese, Hawaiians, all of that, all included it into their cuisine. As spam grew, everyone learned that Hawaii eats spam. Oh my God, everybody in Hawaii, how much spam do you eat? It became a stigma. It became this thing that we're known for, you know? And then it became this stigma where spam was something that we were only known for. And we were fighting to say that our cuisine was much more than just spam and rice. I think uh, nowadays we've reverted back to see that spam is part of our culture. An important part that fed a lot of people. And the reason why it is eaten so much in Hawaii. I love people like Chef Rob that's making their own version of Spam, bringing it to the next level and trying new things. It's something that we should be proud about. It's part of our DNA, nothing to hide from. So I'm gonna just sear it off, kind of get brown on both sides. Once we get some color on it, we're gonna pull it off. That's what you wanna see right there. Even golden brown on here. In that same pan, we're gonna take hints of Japanese flavors, and we're gonna deglaze that. We're gonna take some sweet rice wine, some mirin. Add some sugar, and finally, some shoyu. One of my favorite memories of Spam Musubi is uh, giving it to the sound guys on Top Chef. I would create musubis for myself to make snacks uh, so that we have them throughout the day. Uh, but I made friends with the sound guys and gave them musubis. So it was amazing to be at judge's table, getting grilled by Padma, and then look over to the sound guy and he's eating a musubi. Amazing. So we've got all our components to your classic musubi. I'm gonna cut it down so that it's to size of our container that we're gonna wrap it with and then we'll get going. So I'm just gonna take the nori, they take a second, just brushed right over the fire. That's all they do, need just a little bit of, little bit of heat. So I encourage you guys, go out there, get you guys yourselves one of these fancy musubi makers and then uh, you'll see how easy it is. So the credit of the creation of the Spam Musubi goes to Barbara Funemura of the Joni Hana restaurant out of Poipu, Kauai. So the original version of Spam Musubi was actually like an onigiri, a triangle shaped rice ball. It was stuffed with Spam, covered with a little bit of furakake, and then served like that. Until one of her workers brought in an oshizori or a rice press where it was bamboo made, not like this acrylic one. She would put the rice down on the bottom, found out that Spam fit perfectly in the middle, wrap it up with her nori, and she knew from then on that that was gonna be the style of the musubi. And then Spam musubi is created. There you have it. The perfect bite of salty umami goodness. This beautiful, beautiful concoction, the Spam musubi. You'll find it on the countertops at convenience stores, at gas stations, supermarkets. You'll see kids down at the beach devouring them 
or uncle quietly in his truck in the parking lot listening to Don Ho as he finishes off a bite of musubi and thinks about Enti going away to Las Vegas all alone by himself. I got captured in the moment. That's what musubi does. It's amazing. Look at this. A thing of beauty that only can come together in a place called Hawaii. On the surface, it looks Japanese, but it took Barbara Funimura with her amazing talent to put together Spam, sweet soy, rice, and nori. This thing that is so convenient equally to any sushi bar across the world, the powerful Spam Musubi.